would for a longer wavelength. Uh, so we can switch back to the notes uh, and think about what this means uh, and what this means when we're talking about all the different kinds of light waves we have, and I've shown a bunch here, is that if we have the wavelength, we also know the frequency of these wavelengths. So for example, radio waves, which have very long wavelengths, have very uh, low frequencies, whereas where we go to waves that have very uh, long wavelengths, or very short wavelengths, such as X-rays or cosmic rays, they in turn have very high frequencies. So it's important to get a little bit of a sense of what all these different kinds of uh, lights do. You're absolutely not responsible to uh, memorize what the wavelengths of the different types of lights are, but you do want to be able to uh, know the general order of them. So if someone tells you they're using UV light versus X-ray light, you know that the X-ray light is in fact at a higher frequency. So that's the important takeaway message from this slide. Uh, if we think about these different types of lights, Microwave light, if it's absorbed by a molecule, is a sufficient amount of uh, frequency and energy to get those molecules to rotate. That, of course, generates heat, so that's how your microwaves work. If we talk about uh, infrared light, which is at a higher frequency here and a shorter wavelength, infrared light, when it's absorbed by molecules, actually is enough to cause molecules now to vibrate. If we move up to the more high frequency end of visible light and all the way into UV light. If you shine UV light at certain molecules, it's gonna have enough energy to actually pop that, those electrons in that molecule up to a higher energy level, which will make more sense once we talk about energy levels uh, in atoms, but that's what UV light can do. And actually that's responsible for fluorescence and phosphorescence that you see where typically UV light comes in. Uh, so if you use a black lamp or something and you excite something up to a higher energy level and then it relaxes back down to its lower energy state, it's gonna emit a new uh, wavelength of light which is gonna be visible to you. Uh, X-rays are at even a higher frequency and those are sufficient to actually ab be absorbed by a molecule and pop an electron all the way out of that molecule. You can see how that would be damaging to the integrity of that molecule. That's why uh, X-rays are so damaging. You don't wanna have electrons disappearing for no good reason from your molecules that can cause the kind of mutations we don't want to be uh, seeing in ourselves. Uh, and then also as we go higher, we have gamma rays and cosmic rays. Within the visible range of what we can see, uh, you also want to know this uh, relative order. Uh, that's pretty easy. Most of us have memorized that in kindergarten, so that should be fine. Uh, just remembering that violet is the end that actually has the shortest wavelength, uh, which means that it also has, of course, the highest frequency. So just an interesting fact about uh, this set of light, which we're most familiar with, if we think about our vision, it turns out that our vision's actually logarithmic and it's centered around this green frequency. So if instead of a red laser pointer here, I had a green one, you'd actually, to our eyes, it would seem like the green one was brighter, even if the intensity was the same. And that's just because uh, our eyes are centered and logarithmic around uh, this green frequency set. So using the relationship between uh, frequency and wavelength, we can actually understand a lot of